So now we're going to have uh, Raul Keza, which is a, a very, fa very famous uh, hacker and cracker in Europe and in Italy. He has a long history of uh, uh, coming from the, uh, uh, no, uh, the other side of law enforcement and then over time coming with the good guys, or quote unquote, <laughs> or <laughs> so supposedly uh, better guys, and, um, which o overwhelmingly are. Uh, and uh, so he's been working with NATO, with the Italian Ministry of Defense, with Uni Unicree, and with his own company, Security Brokers, to actually bring this expertise on malware and malware, you know, syst malware sy management systems on this. So he will, uh, you know, talk to us about this from this perspective. Uh, thanks, uh, Raul. All yours. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry I'm not in Bruxelles with you guys. Um, I'm co-organizing, I'm not only a speaker at the conference, but I think it's one. So I really couldn't. I tried everything. I tried my best. First of all, uh, thanks to Rufo. Thanks to the audience. I know I have only 15 minutes. I rush every time they call me. So, well, I love to speak. I love to be a speaker. Uh, there's much more slides than, than for uh, 15 minutes. The reason is because I would like you, all of you, actually, to get the material and study back home. Uh, well, Rufo and me, we talk a lot about this. Once a month that we speak about this, about this presentation. Uh, in the meanwhile, I connected on another computer, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, I told him, well, it's my idea that before to explain how we can we can limit, we may be able to limit the damage, because this is really a huge debate all around the world, uh, we should get the scenario. So most of the slides are about the scenario, and at the end I will tell you why, because thanks God, uh, some great folks that actually, as far as I know, are there, or physically or remotely, they already did a great job. Uh, I mean, we, the geeks, we did the job already. Now it should be time of the fault to up to the governments and the policymakers. So let's start. Slide, please. Uh, yep, I have a disclaimer because it's mandatory. You will understand why. Uh, small abstract scenario, vectors, because if we don't really know who we are speaking about, uh, it's going to be hard to understand the kind of measures. And it's not just, as Rufo said, there are many, many players. Uh, some hints about on privacy and democracy what should we do and then i would like you to go back home happy so i brought some slides that you can eventually print as stickers and and stick on your laptop or whatever you want uh the slide please and slide again just just be quick as rufo said i uh, i'm an advisor to many institutions so uh, it's not mandatory that having am telling you express the views and opinions of the un and isa i've been at the psg of in the last 10 in, in the last five years and so on and so on. Slide. After after AD, after Snowden, uh, a Pandora box opened and really exploded all over the world. We keep on to read new, uh, to learn about new stuff like of every week, every day. Some of the stuff on, of the stuff is incredible. I have a few slides to comment as I think my colleague they did on the Vodafone affair and on Eldica, but we'll save this in a while. Uh, the italic one, authority for efforts and so on, is what Rufo actually, he told me, hey, let's speak about this. So the questions will be, is it possible given the nature of such systems? Because as, as he was saying, this is a really critical area and main inter a lot of interest out there. What are the main software and views from an ethical hacker or correcting or naming in the way you want. Slide. Uh, in the past, well, in the past, in the last 10 to 20 years, we were used to see this, so activism, cyber terrorism, whatever it means, I still have to understand it, the MODs, uh, SCAD, oil and gas, finance, uh, the invisible hand that is uh, hacking all around, Let's go ahead, until this guy, uh, slide please, until this guy, he took a, a dramatic decision, slide. So we should really stop dreaming, if you if we want to uh, perform our adversaries, we should learn something and what here we have to zoom in is about the vulnerabilities often are brought in by the vendors uh every day we read a ton of news about that there is there are there are markets of zero day gray black white whatever we'll see that state sponsored attacks and then and the dos and, and whatever so what has changed is the con is the concept itself of privacy democracy and intelligence operations which often are called black ops slide uh, the scenario, this is I'm very proud about. This was back in 2004, me and Francesco Bosco, Stefania Ducci, other people at Unicri, which is one of the smallest agencies in the UN world. Uh, we started to 
We started to work at HPP Actors Profiling Project. We wanted to apply the world of acting, the shines of criminal profiling to the world of acting. What's that lighted in uh, red? Uh, just hit enter, just like a slide. Should pop up a circle, a red circle, yep. At the time, they told us, yeah, well, come on, government agent, the military hackers, there's no way, that was 2004. Then, as far as I can read, uh, from PLA to NSA to whatever, we were not run definitively. Slide. So it's not just hackers, slide. Cybercrime is ranked really among the top crimes in the world. Big, huge money is involved over there. Every time I read uh, about the statistics, the data, the figures I read, I'm, I'm used to read like everything. Uh, a good estimation should be uh, between 16 and 20 billions of errors that those bad guys, not tax, they put in their hands, in the pockets, slide. And nevertheless, there are huge differences between between the cybercam and the hacker. So whenever you will go back home, study the slide is very nice, very interested, slide. But uh, I think all of you remember that back in December 2013 in Dubai, at the ITU, uh, there was a huge debate. I, I have a friend from Italian government all the time. I have fun of him like, hey, you're going to Dubai, to the ITU meetings, you go in fancy places. And he used to finish at 3, 4 p.m. and call me back. No call, 5 p.m., 7 a.m. I called him around 10 p.m. He told me, Shh, I cannot talk. We are still here. We are voting. There are some issues. They finished like uh, in, at late night. What happened? Uh, the way we are used to see the world, if you if we close our eyes and we think about the friends, who is friends to who, who is enemy to who, and we compare to what has been voted, you can understand on your own with your own eyes that stuff is changing. The the assets are changing so much. So some countries that used not to be on the same side of another country now it is slight. What's happening right now? This all, all of this small introduction is about to say to tell you that no, no matter if you're speaking about cybercrime, information warfare, industrial espionage, state espionage, or whatever, uh, it's like everyone is against everybody. From the national states, IC stands for the intelligence community, law enforcement agencies, organized crime, activism, industrial spies, terrorists, corporations, and cyber mercenaries, whatever it means. Slide. Uh, and this brings me back to 2005, when the, this hack happened. The Matelko fan, the Matelko passionate, I uh, belong to Telecom Security Task Force with Emmanuel Gadai, Philippe Langlois, Fyodor, Fyodor Yarochkin, and we studied the case. And that was really impressive. There is a few documentation available. The one from Wikipedia is really good. There is, there is Itakuli. But let me bring you to the point. This was a rootkit on an MSC on Ericsson. It's not that easy. I think that if with half of you, with the two or three guys from the audience, I would eventually sit down on a weekend, we would walk out with a, 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 rootkit for, a, a rootkit for Windows, something on Linus, but on Ericsson Axi, come on, that's not easy. Uh, there, there has been a fine by the, by the Data Protection Authority, 76, 76 million. And at the time I was thinking, well, that's correct. Uh, they anticipated ENISA and Article 13 on the data breach. We, we, which are contributed to. But then, thanks to Snowden, back in 2010, we learned a slide. We learned something. We learned that, uh, we learned about the black budget uh, of the NSA, slide please, of the NSA, and then slide again. So we heard about this uh, more than half a million at the time, 30, 231 black ops, one was Vodafone. Okay, we got it, now everything is clear. Uh, so let's come in, let's jump to the point. Uh, the Jenny unit, they hack into four main systems in order to spy on contents and control information. This is one of the main issues that guys will really need to speak about. Slide. Uh, then what happened in 2013? Something that should not happen ever. A member state, UK, GCHQ is from UK, hacked into a member state, which is Belgium, which is Belgacom. Uh, I work at over there, I work with the European Commission. The customer of Belgacom actually are, is Inisa, is the European Commission. I don't really think there is any terrorist at the European Commission. Do you? I don't think so. So this is one of the focus points, of the key points that really we, we should speak about because after Snowden, we learned that it's a jungle out there and that was going on since a long time. This, it started back in 92 with, with Kalea and really, I would need like two or three hours to get into the details. Uh, slide, because I'll just try to select some slide to 
to make you think and maybe having a small debate. Uh, the Dutch bill would give police second powers. This is a couple of years that we're speaking about this. Uh, I think that is totally correct that the law enforcement has can have available all kinds of uh, of ways to arrest terrorists, pedophiles, and criminals, and so on. Yes, they do. But whenever you uh, slide, please, whenever the bill that they are discussing since a couple of years is claiming to these investigation powers would not only cover computers located in the Netherlands, but also computers located in other countries if the location of those computers cannot be determined. And we're speaking about suspects. So this is something that the intelligence can do. It's not something that the law enforcement can do. This is one of the biggest difference between law enforcement and intelligence. Uh, I'm really, I'm seriously scared about this because what if they were wrong and the suspect is not a bad guy? What if I'm not the bad guy, you are not the bad guys, but while sending, while hacking your computer, they get access to our personal data. They get access to the intimate picture that you and your wife, you should if you don't encrypt them or whatever. What if they destroy your data because of a, of a mistake of the zero day of the Trojan or the malware, whatever they are deciding to do? Slide because this is bringing us to something more. From where these law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies, they buy, because they outsource, they buy from outdoor, from outside. So on WikiLeaks, we have uh, very good pages on selling surveillance to to the dictators, weaponizing data kills, in, kills innocent people. And, and Rufo mentioned that in team, I will jump to this like uh, just on next slide. This is not up to date because now the press coverage on a team is even too much. I really am a good friend to I'm a good friend to Claudio Guarnieri from Shadow Server and Citizens of Lab and all the folks over there. They did uh, they wrote like three or four efforts. This was uh, the, the latest one. Whenever you, as a private company, uh, you sell to those countries uh, in bold in the bottom of the page, you can claim officially through your press office and spokesman that you don't sell. You only sell to, to those countries in whitelist. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, slide. It, that's not only against an Italian company as a continuous. I know the CEO since 20 years. Also, Finn Fisher uh, has been leaked and breached and so on. As Rufo said, now that technology is in the hands of the bad guys. Uh, there were two, two zero days on Flash. And this will bring you to my next slide. So, slide, please. Uh, this nice guy is telling that mass interception of entire populations is not only a reality, it's a new secret industry spanning 25 countries. In Italy, the business is 30, uh, 300 million a year, globally it's 5 billion, but again, I'm not sure that those amounts are that correct because I, I know some law enforcement interception, uh, some local interception company, uh, I have the visibility of the leaks uh, of those two companies. Uh, if you run some maths, maybe we'll pick more slide please so there is a huge pricing debate uh slide again uh what if when the when the when germany they want millions of errors in order to buy zero day holes because they badly want to intercept ssl ssl is the nightmare of every government you encrypt https no good no good slide please and this brings us to black gray white market prices that are ranging from thousands to millions if you ask to some indian hacker a price list is peanuts if you ask to some guy in thailand is uh, hundreds of thousands if you speak to the intelligence from time to time it's million i've seen i remember a private company selling like a bouquet of 25 days for 2.5 millions or usd slide please so this is my ugly graph i'm not really a designer but in Alice in Wonderland, there is software. Some of them, uh, the software are written by, by human beings, and we do mistakes. So the, this will eventually bring to a bug. And in Alice Wonderland, uh, someone will report, and, and, and will report it to, uh, to the vendors, the cert, uh, running a patch, blah, blah, blah. Here, uh, in, in real life, it's, it's kind of different. In real life, uh, it works that that bug will bring to a zero day that will be sold to someone, and that someone, most of the time, is, uh, uh, it will be, and I'm sorry, but I'm running also out of battery, I don't have a power plug around, so I'm configuring the battery, uh, to a uh, well, uh, white market, a gray market, or whatever, slide, please. Uh, this is what, the way I see this is from Flavia, one of my security researchers, 
Uh, we think that, well, if you analyze currently this, this crossing, you think about what happened in Kiev, what happened, what happened uh, uh, in Caracas, and I had, I had to cut off those lights, but all the material is public, then we really have uh, some issue over there. Uh, please allow me two seconds because I really have to change the battery or, or I will be shut down. Uh, no, 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 give me two minutes. Okay, I hope it will work. Uh, so, slide again, please. Uh, so what? I'm sure you know it, but every time I watch it, I, I sit down and I say, Miko, I love you. Uh, when Miko was at, um, was speaking over there at TED, he said stuff so wonderful. He said, don't tell me that you don't care, that you don't have anything to hide, because, ev because everything is about privacy. Uh, next slide. Privacy is not negotiable. It should be built in in all the system we use because surveillance changes the history. Imagine if President Nixon would have access to the kind of, of surveillance technology of today. And then next slide, uh, Miss President, she said, if there is no right to privacy, there cannot be true freedom of expression and opinion, and therefore no effective democracy. And speaking about democracy, and if you don't trust a politician, trust at least the folk over there. Um, I still run him. I mean, my kudos to him. And he just said something very strong, but which on which uh, I partially agree. The United States is right now treating the internet as is, it would be treating one of, the, of its colonies. So back to the age of colonization, we were the foreigners users on the internet. We should think about Americans as our masters. I don't want this. And full of friends in the United States. Uh, the security community is so huge. And we should not really have got to this point. So this is the last slide. Uh, go, on, go on the next one, uh, which actually was the core. I know, uh, go one back. Or maybe, ah, you have the, uh, the previous release. I'm sorry, I will speak about this. We sh what should we do? We should define the risks of abuse, internal abuses, external abuses. I know some law enforcement officer that he got access to, to, to spying resources and he abused of that for personal use. This can happen. We are human beings. And, but this, this should not happen. We should draw the borders. We should draw the scenarios, understand the, the actors, involve the experts, and please, not just with all the respect I have, not just the policymakers. Let's breed mixed and hybrid teams. I hope we won't do again a huge mistake because we really we made we made so many. Think about the GSM from GSM Association, security to obscurity. We are still paying up. We are still paying after 25 years uh, bugs and insecurity. Next slide, just be quick slide slide. If you want to print this, I think it's kind of fun. I don't think a free society is compatible with us with an organization like the NSA in the current form, but NSA is changing also. Slide. Uh, the simple songs were exposing NSA surveillance since 2007. Please look. Slide. The NSA, the only part of government that actually listens. This is very ironic as well. And boom. And the last one, yes, we scan. Uh, two more slides. If you want some readings uh, that just to go more, I advise you at least those first two. The other ones are more referred to the cybercrime. But if you have, if you had ever read the uh, the cuckoo's egg from Clifford Stoll. If you ever heard uh, the master of deception, where young things of Ecker they shut down at and back in uh, January uh, 1990, or uh, Underground, which is a wonderful book that tells you the relationship between the hacking community in Europe, in Australia, and uh, uh, in United States and Canada, you will have more elements in order to to decide. Uh, that's it, I'm over. At the last slide, you will find my uh, public key. And uh, I don't know really if there is time for questions. I'm sorry I rushed it so much. I tried to, to stay on time. And the battery of the laptop I'm using, because it's not mine, I don't want to use anything that is coming from Big G. I don't have a Gmail account. I don't use Google Hangout and so on. I'm sorry, I'm paranoid. Uh, so I have just like eight minutes on the battery. I don't know, Rufo, if, if there is time for the Q&A. Uh, my kudos and congratulations again for the event that you that you built. It's unique. Uh, thanks, um, thanks, Raúl, for your presentation. It's been very comprehensive, and the slides, which are very informative, will be available on the website uh, since yep. tomorrow or the yep. day after. 
Um, if there's a quick question for Raul, it would be great. Or Okay, I will put a, a quick question. Raul, uh, um, there are some tools uh, which uh, are currently uh, available and actually legal in many countries, which call lawful hacking tools, uh, targeted tools to in install malware on, sort on certain, uh, uh, certain uh, suspects' uh, uh, computers. There are certain constitutions that deem that illegal now or seem to deem it illegal. There's a lot of discussion and, and uh, in this issue, most of the community assumes that these tools you know, are bad tools and should not be used and that they're not even needed because, uh, uh, because the, the, and so on. Um, and, and they mostly think that uh, there is no way for these tools to be uh, regulated in a way that does not uh, create unacceptable risks for citizens. Do you think that it, in an ideal certification body, which is non-governmental and it's trustworthy, well done, accountable to people and so on, if you had a perfect uh, certification, you know, that can, can it be regulated satisfactorily or it's in the nature of these uh, systems? There are complexity that would just make it just too, too hard, it would just get too complex. Rufo, thanks for the question, great one. Actually, this is the reason why I prefer to focus on the, on, on the scenarios around because I really want, um, beg my pardon if I will list like 10 names, but these are the people that they already, they already made the job. Um, Harold Everson, Ross Anderson, Steve Bellowin, uh, jo Josh Benalo, Matt Blaze, my dear friend uh, uh, from uh, uh, University of Pennsylvania, Bruce, and, and so on and so on, and Neumann and, and Susan and whatever, and, and, and plenty of them. They wrote excellent documents. They highlighted like keys under doormats, uh, what is needed. Uh, they highlighted with the lawful acting paper, the, the full paper. And if you go actually to, to, to the last section, to section seven of the paper, you will see that the issues will be from the policy and leg legislative perspective. We should enforce the reporting. We should accept on the reporting rule. We should provide oversight. And especially, this is what concerns me more, regulating vulnerabilities and, explo and exploitation tools, because right now it's really, it's a jungle, it's a far west, really. So the answer is not so easy. I cannot give it with uh, uh, two minutes more on the battery remaining. Uh, I think that you are so lucky to be there and to have a two full day to discuss about this. I really hope, I think, I, I hope really that you will walk out from from your great event, your great conference, with like a something, some a proposal, a draft proposal or something that all the governments really, or at least the UN, at least ITU, at least UNODC, at least, they should receive and work and elaborate. I love open standards and like Richie, uh, I think that all of us, we can accomplish the mission and the goal, but, 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 I don't think that the word certification or certified will ever fix the possible exposures and risks in this very, very critical science. Okay, so uh, thanks a lot for the kind words, uh, Raul, and thank you for being available. We hope uh, to maybe do it again next year. So thanks yeah. again. Thank you. Thank you, and bye-bye <laughs> to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.